We do not need four more years of bluster and bumbling and chaos. We have seen that movie before, and we all know that the sequel is usually worse. All right, just a moment there, and tonight will be a big night. This is for uh, Kamala Harris's running mate, Governor Tim Walz. He's expected to address the convention as well as former President Bill Clinton and former Speaker Pelosi, so many more. Uh, but that's what's happening inside, and you're going to hear a lot about that. But who's speaking outside? National correspondent Mike Carter live now at Rosie's Home Cooking in Naperville, Illinois, with a preview of today's events. Mike, good morning. Hey guys, good morning. Yeah, Rosie's, right? Uh, named after Rosie the Riveter, of course, an American icon, and we have a diner full of veterans here this morning. We mentioned those speeches last night. We just heard from Barack Obama, his wife, Michelle Obama, also speaking last night. We wanted to get some thoughts from some of our nation's finest about what some of the uh, remarks that we heard last night, including Michelle Obama, who said last night that no one owns a monopoly on what it means to be an American. We also remember back in 2008, before the Wisconsin primary, Michelle Obama says it was the first time she was proud to be an American. So what does that actually mean? Let's ask some Navy veterans. We're here with Russ and Tom. Tom, last night Michelle Obama says, look, no one owns a right. No, no one owns a monopoly on what it means to be an American. But when you think back on those former comments of hers, when she said it was the first time she felt proud to be an American was when her husband was running for president. How did that hit you? Well, first of all, I didn't watch much of it, but I did hear some on the radio this morning, some response on that. And... Uh, I don't, I don't think she is a good American. I don't think she can speak for Americans. It's not a monopoly. It's, a, it's, it's an American for the people. So um, I'm not a fan of, uh, of Michelle Obama or the Obamas at all, but uh, hey. <laughs> Russ, look, the Obama's name looms large in this state. Uh, was Barack Obama, was he, does his, how does his legacy still reign here in Illinois and in Chicago? Is that a good legacy? To, uh, to have? Well, I think in Illinois, which is a screwed up state for many reasons, and I think in Chicago, it's, just, it's even worse than, worse than the state. But how can, how can Barack and how can Michelle think, look around this fabulous country with all the benefits we have, with the richness of, the richness of our, our, our economy, which they have deteriorated under his reign and under Biden's reign? They've ruined the country, and we're going downhill. We have a wonderful country, and we're being beat up. And if we lose this election, we're going to be much. We're going to go down twice as fast as we did during the Biden administration. Of course, there's a lot of policies that are enacted here in Chicago that a lot of people say just aren't working. And some people worry that Democrats want to see the rest of the country look like Chicago. We want to get back to some other veterans. We'll come back to you, Russ and Tom. Thank you very much. Lou, we're live on Newsmax right now. We want to ask you a question. Kamala Harris, she's running for president right now. This is a woman as vice president who says she was the last person in the room when it came to Joe Biden making the decision about the Afghanistan withdrawal. We know about how disastrous that withdrawal was. Should she be entrusted with four years more uh, as president of the United States? Hell no. I, I said, if you look what what's happened in the last three and a half years where she's been the vice president, signing a lot of documents that are really contrary to what's going on today. You know, I, I have no respect for the, the, the vice president or now going to become the president as she thinks. I have no, absolutely no respect. Joe Biden said in that first debate that the veteran community in this country supports him over Donald Trump. Of course, he's no longer the party's nominee. It is Kamala Harris. But who do veterans overwhelmingly support? Is it going to be Kamala Harris or is it going to be Donald Trump? The veterans are going to, 95 percent are going to report uh, re really uh, Donald Trump is going to be their number one choice. Why do you say that? Because they are concerned, Trump is concerned about our veterans. When I, uh, you know, cur prior to this, we had really no help from the current president or the vice president. I I've searched for a long, long time to try to get hearing aids for myself. And, you know, and it took me five or six years, finally, to get myself some hearing aids. You know, and, uh, you know... Today, we were, when I came home, I was treated not very good. 
And today our current veterans feel the same way. They are not treated very well by our current administration. Trump at least is concerned about us. He wants to help us. When our vice president today says it's all talk and no go. And just look at the results. She's been in office three and a half years. What are the results in three and a half years? No results. Now she said, oh, I want to do this, I want to do this. She had six months. She's got another six months. Why isn't she doing it now? What happened to the, when you're going across the line as far as people coming across our uh, borders and, and 10 million people have come across. Why didn't she close the border yeah, for three and a half years? Nothing. And of course now she's backtracking on whether she was the border czar or not. Yeah. Lou, thank now you. Now she said, oh, I want to close the borders. <laughs> oh, well, why haven't you done it? It's been and, on your watch. And walls don't work, but if you look at the United Center, there are walls yes. all around the United Center right now. Yes, look, just look at, the, you know, and they talk about crime. Crime is rapid in Chicago. You know, you can't, it's like gunfight at the OK Corral in the, on the south side of Chicago. So, we're, and we're, where's this country coming to? If a normal person can't feel safe walking down the street at night, the number one job is protect our citizens. Keep crying. Why are the board, why are the stores being boarded up? Well, that's in exactly something we did not see with the RNC in Milwaukee. We didn't see stores boarded up in Chicago. We have seen that this week. Lou, thank you very much, guys. We talked to veterans here at Rosie Steiner all morning. Uh, we'll bring that to you right here on Newsmax. We'll all right. Back to you. These guys are the best, by the way. Uh, great conversations, Mike. Get that next round of coffee because that's some really good stuff. Gives us a great sense of where the voters are at.